All right, so welcome everybody to today's Philly CodeFest workshop, Communicating Tech to a Non-Tech Audience. We're happy to welcome Katie, Katie Zeller. Um, she is one of our um, doctoral students here at TCI, and she'll talk about um, the workshop will cover various techniques that can be used to better help explain your technical projects, your asks, and what is most important about your project to a non-tech audience. This is a great skill to have for CodeFest. Um, CodeFest, you're going to be dealing with all kinds of people. You're going to be dealing with tech people. You're going to be dealing with not tech people. You're going to have to explain your project to all kinds of people. So this is a really, really um, important topic, and um, I'm glad that Katie's here to, to present it for us. So with that, Katie, take it away. Thanks so much, Dave. Um, hi, this will be like a pretty informal talk. Um, and if you guys are up for participating, that'd be great. But if not, um, I'll just go over something. So hi, I'm Katie Zellner, and um, I'm a second year doctoral student at Drexel. Uh, I'm in Professor Alex Arstafik's lab. We're working on user research to design an alerting system to combat delays during trauma resuscitation. Uh, previously, though, I earned my BS in Biological Sciences and Creative Writing at the University of Chicago. I then worked as a consultant at Cerner, where I taught and customized electronic health records to clinicians uh, adopting a new system. And then I earned my Master's of Public Health focused in Epidemiology and Biostatistics at Johns Hopkins University. After that, I did work in pandemic response as an epidemiologist for Howard County Department of Health. And through all of these experiences, what I've mostly learned is the importance of communicating difficult and technical work in an easy to understand way. It's been from communicating my research as an undergraduate at UChicago, from trying to communicate how to customize a health record, how to use a new design feature, why it's important at Cerner, to today um, or previously designing database requirements for uh, contact tracing as an epidemiologist, and today writing papers, writing grants, and getting uh, further in academic career. So no matter what writings I found to be very important. And actually where I really credit most of what I've learned was from a course in my undergraduate career called Little Red Schoolhouse. Uh, or academic professional writing. And that's really where most of what I've learned is coming from. So today I'm going to talk about the techniques I've learned from that course and through my experiences of how I've learned to communicate clearly uh, in a non technical to a non technical audience. Um, so the number one thing, and this could actually be the category for all of these, is knowing your audience. We, as more technical people or people in academia, we love all of the details. We want to go through the most in-depth literature review. We want to hear of the nitty gritty and everything, but often your audience is less interested in that. So I don't know if any of our participants here today have an example of anything they're working on or and what, what they're writing, if they have to write or communicate anything soon. Um, And if you have comments, feel free to shout it out or put it in the in the chat. I am monitoring the chat and I'll I can read it out for you. Yeah. If not, that's okay. I can give a few examples. Um I, the most basic example, uh, and this is not a technical thing at all, is that um if you are giving a presentation about pets and your audience is uh, cat people, you're not gonna start talking about dogs. In further detail, though, this is more about um, knowing what your stakeholders care about. Uh, when I was a consultant for Cerner, I would report on service level agreements. I would write up uh, the costs of breaking these service level agreements. I talk about how much we uh, have been spending or how much uh, like what what the rate was on breaking these service level agreements. The stakeholders, they don't necessarily care about the nitty gritty data they want the it broken down into points tell them what you need to tell them first and why it's important in as clear and concise language as you can um don't be afraid of shorter sentences there is a tendency to feel like we need to 
uh, show our intelligence, so our know-how by using longer sentences with lots of jargon, but the shorter and more concise and more clear uh, the language you use, the more effective you'll be at communicating that understanding to your audience. Um, rather than talking about a problem in nitty gritty technical detail, you can still say this problem is causing this and it's important because of why and if you need more details like they're here and you can provide like that attachment, you can provide the coding report, you can reply, provide what that information is, but having an executive summary of like, this is what I need from you and this is why it's important and this is when I need it, that is the most important thing. So that's more like day to day work, but even when you're give, giving a presentation, um, presenting a project that you've done, presenting um, a proposal for a project, you need to know what your audience is after. Um, if I'm writing a grant or writing a research proposal, I'm looking at like, well, what is the agency I'm asking from? If it's a health agency, I'm focusing on how the work is contributing to healthcare, how it's contrib contributing to those aims. If I'm uh, writing a paper and I check where I'm submitting to, and the, their, the theme is building the evidence base, I'm going to talk about how my research contributes to that. Uh, the audiences you come across in the technical field will generally make their priorities clear, and it's up to you to tailor your communications to them to make sure that it is appropriate to them and to start with what they care about so that you can get to what you care about. Um, does anyone have any questions about this, this idea of knowing your audience for communication? No. See so there. something came something came in the chat. Yeah. Um, how to teach to senior citizens versus employed and non-employed adults for citizens okay. versus children. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, Tom, can you give like an example of like what you're looking to teach them, like a subject or something? You can type it in the chat. Okay, if not, um, Oh, that is what you do. Okay. Um, are you just like generally a teacher or I was just looking for like an example of like what you're looking to teach them. Computers. Okay. Yeah, I think coming at it, um, looking at like, what are they trying to get out of it? Like, why are they there? Why are they looking to learn this and starting with that, like the most important things, you know, each of these different people in this population. So senior citizens, employed people, non-employed people and children, they all are starting from a different skill set. And it's for you as a teacher to understand like where they're starting from and what they care about most, because once you show them that you kind of have them in your attention. They'll, they'll pay more attention like, oh, this person understands what I need and what I care about. So I'm going to keep giving them my attention so I can keep listening to them. So for instance, non-employed adults, showing them like the quickest way to like find their benefits, to find job sites, that kind of thing. Um, knowing where they are from the beginning and asking that. It's definitely different like teaching versus just communicating or writing an essay or an email because you have like a different end goal. It's not just you're asking for something, but you're trying to impart knowledge and, and better them. So understanding like why they're there and what they're after first will, will give you like the most, most power in that scenario, um, and, like enable you to actually help them. Does that work? Anything else, Tom? Um, so my second point is really um, frustrating for me as as a writer, because uh, throughout my academic career through undergraduate I've been the kind of person who can just knock out a paper in a couple hours right before the deadline and that's it i'm done whatever it's okay, but that does not work um, when you're 
working in a technical field when you're writing papers, submitting, um, submitting anything, communicating to people, because what your first draft usually is, is only how the information makes sense to you in your head. Um, and it's not tailored to your audience. And it will often be really difficult for anyone else but you to follow because it's just your unique way of thinking. Um, for instance, it can be really difficult to follow like your jumps of logic from issue to issue to issue uh, if you just get write down your first draft and that's it. So the first draft will be uh, generally kind of a mess, but that's okay because that's your own thought patterns. You print out your first draft, you think about like, okay, how am I actually going to organize this? How am I actually going to sit down and think, does this communicate my idea clearly? And the way that I like to do it is blocks of doing uh, first, what is the problem? Then what is the cost of the problem? What is your claim? And just repeating that throughout and making it very clear in different blocks of different problems, your claim, supporting the claim and moving on. Uh, this is also where I focus on writing those shorter sentences. Sentences can go on and on and on. Um, and while they can still be grammatically correct, they can be difficult to follow. Capturing your audience's attention with uh, the subjects that they care about first, uh, and then putting in this new information in a short sentence will ensure that like they understand what you're saying and they can move on. Um, editing is also really important uh, to leave some time in advance, uh, print out a draft and give it a solid 12 hours before you read it again. Um, you will miss out so much if you just keep editing the same time in the same uh, time frame because your brain hasn't fully reset. So giving yourself a good 12 to 24 hour break in between uh, viewings for big papers or big projects for budget proposals for whatever you're doing. Um, even talks uh, presentations will give you that time to have a clear head and give a new light to look at it. Um, often I will also read my entire paper, my entire email, uh, everything out loud, because that way I actually see and hear every single word. When you just read in your head, you often uh, miss out on different things because you just skip over. You skip over sentences and you think, oh, that's fine. We're good. I've read this before. And you end up missing out on sentences that are awkward or confusing. Um, Knowing your audience and editing for the audience really goes hand in hand. You can have a really good paper that is meant for uh, a professor, for someone in academia, that if you submitted that to a project manager, a product manager, it would not be appropriate for them whatsoever. It could still be very well written. It could still get explained to your audience idea across to the audience very well, but it's not tailored for that specific audience. So it's not right. So making sure that when you are writing and when you're creating presentations and emails that you are communicating directly to the needs of your audience is the most important thing. Uh, Tom had a comment about small well warfare teaching. Tom, do you want to say anything about that? Uh, maybe uh, we'll hear more about that. But it was at this point that I was wanting to see if anyone in the audience had something that they were working on that we could go through and uh, tailor for whatever uh, audience they have together. Uh, so if any of the audience has anything that they want uh, to go over together in this workshop, that would be great. But if not, we can just go to the, any questions that the audience has. Um, any questions, anyone? Oh, 
Okay, well, uh, thanks so much. And I'm so happy uh, if you attended this talk or listened to the recording and you do have your own questions or anything to answer for your email, to set up um, any like Zoom, Zoom call or anything to talk about uh, writing or presenting to a non-technical audience, my email's here. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks so much. Thank you, Katie. Um, thanks everybody. Um, the Katie provided her email, so if you do have questions for her after the fact, feel free to reach out for her. And also, if you have general questions, you can always reach out to me and I can put you in touch. My email is dr366 at drexel.edu. Uh, again, thank you for attending today's workshop on um, talking tech to non-technical audiences. We hope you got you, we hope you enjoyed it. The recording will be posted sometime later this week. And also, I hope to see everybody at CodeFest. I'm coming up in a couple of weeks. If you've not already registered, please be, do, please be sure to do so. You continue to attend workshops. We have uh, more workshops coming up this week and more to be announced at the end of this week. But we'll also start announcing some of our challenges and some of our sponsors coming up. So we're looking forward to a great event. So again, Katie, thank you so much. It's possible and, to, to speak by, uh, by microphone? Oh, sure. A mute? Sure. Okay. I, I, um, I'm sorry, but my typing is nowhere near my 100 word speed that I used to have. So my typing is very slow. Plus, I'm a little bit older and my eyesight is a little bit harder to see the keyboard. But um, one of the things that um, is it, it is Katie. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, right. Katie was saying that, um, you know, teaching in small sentences is, is, is exactly what I have been doing for a long time. But I did never start out that way because I, in, in, um, I only have a high school education. I don't have a college degree, but I have many, many years of teaching computers and many other subjects to different uh, after school kids and plus adults, um, nonprofit, profit. So like, you know, I, I do understand what you're saying and it does make a lot of sense. And the term I was saying yes, uh, that was something I learned yesterday was called um, small warfare, small war, war, warfare teaching in that uh, someone was making an example of the 300 um, Spartan movie. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but like uh, the Spartans were facing a huge amount of uh, Venetian, I believe, um, uh, fighters. Uh, they could not match you know, head on, so they uh, funneled the um, battle so that uh, it, it, they matched up with only 300 opposite fighters in order to, um, you know, hopefully win the, win the uh, war, which of course they did not. But um, going back to teaching adults and from teaching kids, it's completely different. You know, as you, as you know already, it's like it, sometimes we can start out at a very high level and then all of a sudden we stuck or we put in a place where we need to teach kids or we need to teach people who, um, who are not quite as educated as, as we are ourselves. So our language and the way we explain things uh, completely changes. And I found that by making common, um, uh, common things that they do in their everyday life, it's easier to transfer to, to them in, you know, uh, in, instead of trying to do it at a higher level. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I think that's a good example. Um, like really tackling the issue, like one group at a time and like tailoring it to them. Like, I think, I think that definitely works for sure. Yeah, I, I yeah. was down, I'm, I'm actually from Baltimore. So, I, and I was also down at uh, John Hopkins for the, um, um, I, I won't say down there, but I was online for the uh, certification uh, for COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and then taking that that certification and trying to break it down to people who are coming in into the I, I was teaching normally at recreation centers here in Philadelphia, and people come in with the the nose is being covered, um, not washing their hands, and you know these are just different things that we we hope everybody does anyway without the disease, but sometimes it just doesn't happen that way. And trying to teach and not offend people that's that's yeah. one big thing that um, I find like. Uh, a lot of teachers can kind of forget they're at a certain level, but hey, you're coming in my neighborhood. You work, you know, you, you're working down here. So please bring it down to where I can understand you. 
No, yeah. I, you know, I don't know if this is where I should be going with this, but um, anything, and what caught my eye is that, you know, teaching at different levels is something that I find very interesting because it helps me to find different ways to teach uh, to different folks who may understand or, or even those who have a much better understanding because they can bring things to me to make me understand and you know have a different level of, of um, presenting the information to them. No, oh, yeah, I think that definitely applies. Like, I mean, I was definitely more talking about like more of a work academic context, but even like teaching, thinking foremost of like who you're talking to, especially if it's people who, yeah, like have a completely different like understanding of the world, a completely different like a basis. Um, knowing that first like goes such a long way, even just when teaching anything, um, because you can't, it's really hard to teach if you don't know the baseline. So first like getting to know your audience is is a really good first step. And I think that's a good example that you have there. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of my students come in, especially adults who do not know how to use a keyboard or a mouse. Mm -hmm. um, and especially like here again, I teach computers. So like, you know, that's my, my where I go with this. Um, but when they walk out of there, they're amazed at, you know, I found a lot. And again, I've been doing this for a while. So I found a lot of tools that I use with seniors that I now can take to uh, regular adults or even children who don't understand um, how to do certain things on a keyboard or a mouse, even though they're using smartphones um, and they think that they know more than me, which is kind of funny, but you know, I kind of just go along with it and, and whatever. Um, but no, um, teaching and being able to um, go from one level to a different level, like, you know, it, it's a rewarding experience and, and seeing that light bulb go off and they, they all of a sudden they walk out and like I was saying, they, they didn't know how to use a keyboard or a mouse. Now all of a sudden they walk out the door and they're smiling to themselves and saying, okay, I did this. I started programs, I started working on a computer. You know, I did a lot of different things I did not know how to do before. No, yeah, yeah, that's great. No, thanks for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again, um, Katie and yep. Tom. Thank you both. And uh, look forward to speaking with you all soon. Yeah. Thanks all so right. much, David. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye.